In 2003, there was a flash flood that was due to illegal logging. It was the most horrific scene that I've ever seen in my life. I was like, how amazing would that be to use that technology to be able to capture the illegal logging and be able to put pressure on these corporations that are basically taking advantage of poor people to do their dirty work. It was that moment for me where I was awoken. I was like, we can expose them. My name is Rihanna Lakin. I'm from Portland, Oregon, the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Just watch that pancake. Mm -hmm. I have two kids, and uh, I'm also a drone pilot, and have been for about the last four or five years. I am the founder of the Amelia Drone Heart Group. It's an international community of women that are either drone pilots or work in the drone field or are advocates of it. And in the last four years, we have over 600 women. My goal in starting this group was to help frame and shape that public opinion because I, I see drones being utilized like cars or computers. It changes really the way our world works. We're picking up Alexa, who has been flying with me um, for like four years now. Hi, honey. Hi. We're going to go down to Meldrum Bar and do some flying. In 2003, I was living in North Sumatra, Indonesia, in a place called Bukit Lawang. This tiny village just surrounded by jungle, sounds of the jungle. Due to the deforestation, the eroding soil, there were about 230 landslides. And those landslides brought down old growth. The old growth trees created a dam. The dam broke one evening and it wiped out the entire village, taking about 300 lives with it. Men, women, children, all the houses, everything gone. As a drone pilot, I wanted to go out and help with search and rescue. It was that moment for me where I was awoken to the devastation that's created from illegal logging. The two biggest things that I wanted to do, one is to save the, the jungle, and the other is search and rescue during disasters. So I'm gonna fly it up, and then I'm gonna give it to you to fly. All right. In the very beginning, I saw the way the media portrayed drones, and it was like, peeping toms and, you know, spying. But every day I feel like a new application comes out. We're already seeing drones deployed in humanitarian disasters with full red thermal cameras attached to them to be able to look for missing people. They can send blood or medicine in remote areas. They can fly it out via drone. In Sumatra, they're utilizing drones to map the jungle canopy to count how many potential orangutans might still be in the wild. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and <clears throat> I'm gonna take it up. And then once I'm up, you're gonna take over and we'll take some video, yeah? Video? Yeah. I do some volunteer work with our local SWAT team. We've practiced doing things with the drone where the drone goes ahead of us. We're in like the big rig. There's an active shooter in some like old abandoned mill. We send the drone in ahead to be able to look and see if there's anyone. The most relevant ways the drones for good have been utilized recently is with the no dapple protests. The drone pilots in Standing Rock like will always be up here to me. What they did every day with the drones, they documented the pipeline and its progress, the actions that happened and interactions between law enforcement and the water protectors. To hold people accountable. The police were pretty brutal. 
My goal wasn't to go out and fly. There were indigenous drone operators, but my goal was to just go be of use to them. What are we doing? Our lives are under attack! Stand up, white men! It was extremely empowering to the movement to have drones there. And as the drones would go by, you'd see people like do this. They knew everything was being documented. It made them more comfortable. I was at an action here in Portland not too long ago. I saw someone piloting the drone for the police directly over the protesters. And in my mind, I was like, right, you guys are doing facial recognition. To be really honest, I can't help but be nervous of the future and scared. I can't help but feel that way when as much as they can be used for good, they can be used for bad. Certainly when you are talking about things like deforestation, it's best to not have to go so close to potentially very dangerous situation. Dangerous because you're wanting to expose a billion dollar corporation. I filmed some illegal gold mines in Indonesia, and these gold mines are using mercury. It's soaking into the ground. I take my drone up, and I see there's these mines. And from what I understand, thousands of people have already died in these mines, but nobody will talk about it because it's dangerous. These villagers already could barely survive, so of course they're gonna take, you know, whatever opportunity comes their way, even at the expense of the health of their entire village. You're up against a very large corporation. You're up against local mafia that wants to keep money in, your, in their pockets. They let me fly around. They had no idea that I was collecting data. But something like that is something you can't get up close to. It's a lot safer to go in with a drone. What I really love to try and promote now is for other people to do the things that I wish that I could be doing right now. And that's a big reason that I want more girls involved. The leader of drone manufacturers reached out to me and wanted to do a full female pilot month. So one month of promoting women. When I go on social media, the world doesn't, like, I don't want to save it. Great. When I fly, it's the most humble experience for me. I realize that I'm just so small, but each of us is very important, and that makes me want to save the world even more or inspire others to save it. Sweet.